This weekend, South Africans um, um, all over the world are celebrating 20 years of our democracy. <clears throat> Excuse me if I get a little emotional, because I'm celebrating with you. I'm not back home uh, with my friends and my team, but I'm here with you today, and I hope all of you will celebrate our 20 years of democracy. <clears throat> I... <laughs> I was a teenager, um, 20 years ago, my sister and I, on this very day, were preparing very busily lots of food for the thousands of people that were going to be casting their vote for the first time in South Africa's history. The first time, thousands, hundreds and thousands of, of South Africans were going to vote, and 67% of South Africa's voting population voted for Nelson Rolishlashla Mandela, fondly known to us as Madiba. I met uh, Madiba soon after he became president of South Africa. I met him at Chief Albert Lutuli's house in Groutville. I lived close by. And we talked about travel. We talked about his favorite food, which is beans, by the way. Um, and we talked about me wanting to be a designer. And he told me about him studying law. He said to me that it was very important for him to study law and to know everything about it so he could change it for South Africa. And so, as I grew older, I started to reflect on this time with Mandela. Because he also told me, which I didn't quite understand at the time, because I thought we were a free nation back then in 1994. But he reminded me, he said that a lot of work still needed to be done. And he said, you wanted to be a designer? We need designers. We need so many people to do so much more. Because he was saying to me that our democracy was only a part of the journey to freedom. I didn't understand it then. And so recently, I've been reflecting a lot about this, about what he meant. And I started to think about what I do with my life um, and how I've been, maybe what sacrifices have I been making? You know, Madiba made so many sacrifices alongside so many other people. And I wondered, what was I doing? And so when he died last December, I started to think about everything in my life, my personal relationships, my work, and I often would say to myself, even in my darkest hour, what would Madiba do? You know, I come from a family that is a bit of a mixed bag. We lived in tropical KwaZulu-Natal, uh, which is the, the province on the northeast coast, uh, northeast of, of South Africa. I come from a small town, and um, I, I, my, mom, my mom is Persian, and her mom is from Rangoon in Burma. And she's got flaming red hair, a freckled face and amber eyes. And my dad, he's um, South African of Indian descent. His family has been in South Africa for four generations. We spoke in our home, we spoke Gujarati and English and Isi Zulu, and we recited poetry in Arabic and Urdu. So we had a very colorful life. Our home was very colorful, it was loud, full of debates and singing and prayer. And it was a happy childhood. But outside, I knew that we, had, we were living in a time of apartheid which was dark and gloomy. It was a very ugly time in South Africa. And I became aware as a young girl about, aware, aware about, South Af about apartheid because we were living in the southern tip of Africa, but I had to live in an Indian's only area, and I had to go to an Indian's only school. And every day, every day, Every moment, we had to classify ourselves. We had to fill out forms, always justifying who we were. And we had these forms that were English, excuse me, white, black, Indian, and colored. And sometimes they would be other. <laughs> and I always ticked the other. Uh, my dad was very frustrated. And my dad loved to fish. You know, he, he was quite a fisherman. And so we spent a lot of time on the beach. We lived close to the Indian Ocean. And, um, and I used to join my dad. I don't think I was any use, but... Uh, I went with him anyway. And this one occasion, we got kicked off the beach, not very kindly, I might add. And I asked my dad, I said, but why are we getting kicked off the beach? And he said, Zahira, we are Indian, we're not allowed to be on this beach. And I said, but dad, I learned at school that, uh, that this is the Indian Ocean, I thought you owned the beach. <laughs> and so as a young girl, I started to notice that something wasn't right. And I didn't feel nice. I didn't feel nice about 
what was happening. I realized that what was in my home was colorful, it was expansive. What was outside was gloomy and it was diminishing. It was the dull times of apartheid. And my family, like most South African people, lived a life of awkward indignity. We accepted very quietly our circumstances, and it seemed also that the darker you got, the worse you were treated. We lived on the periphery of society with very li little access to economic opportunity. And so as I grew older, I became very socially and politically conscious. I learned while I was a teenager that Mandela was incarcerated, and I learned why. I learned that Chief Albert Lutuli, who was our family friend and who had lived in our family home for several months when he was under house arrest, when he was awarded the Nobel Peace Prize in 1960, he had to be given an honorary white membership or honorary white status just to travel to receive this prize. I also learned that my uncle, Professor Kader Asmal, was in exile for 37 years, and he was living in Ireland. And he, he was in exile because he was one of the founders of the anti-apartheid movement in Europe. So I also learned that our phones were tapped, <laughs> our house, we were, we were visited by national party officials, and my family was interrogated constantly about my uncle's activities while in exile. So the government thought at the time that my uncle should have been locked up with Mandela. In those days, a group of black people was considered an illegal protest instead of a social gathering and a party. There was the Group Areas Act. Yeah, we had an act every so many years to restrain us and restrict us. There was the Group Areas Act, where we were forced to live um, with people of our own race. Some of us were even forcibly removed from our homes and made to live in squalor on, uh, on the periphery of the cities. There was the Bantu Education Act that limited people's education, black people's education, uh, and hence perpetuating their persecution. There was the Land Act that made it impossible for us to own land in South Africa. And my favorite was the Immorality Act, which made it illegal to love someone of another race. Um, students all over the country in South Africa in the 1970s were being killed by the South African Defense Force. They, didn't want to, they were protesting. They didn't want to study Afrikaans. Black people all over the country were being killed. They were, being, they were protesting. They didn't want to use passbooks that limited their movement around the country. We all wanted to be free. But I realized at that time that no one was free. Not the victims, nor the persecutors. We were slaves of colonial masters. Our cultures considered unsophisticated. We had to use back entrances to restaurants if we were allowed in the first place. We were forbidden to visit many parts of South Africa. Can you imagine all the space in a beautiful country and we couldn't access it? I protested because I believed there was better. I wished to be free not only to move around the country and see beautiful things, but also to be free to express myself and to just be me. I wanted my color, my culture, my heritage, my language to matter like anyone else's, or not to matter if it didn't matter. I didn't want to live in fear. I remember, too, that we were called South Africans, but I didn't know what that meant. We were so harshly excluded from activities, important activities in South Africa, how can we be called South African? It just wasn't possible. So this time in South Africa's history was so painful for so many people that some can't speak about it even today. So I wonder then, 20 years on, what does freedom mean to us? I feel free. I feel free now. And I don't take my freedom for granted. I know what it felt like before and I never want to feel it again. I don't even wish anyone else to feel what I felt as a young girl living in South Africa. And so I engage with my freedom every single day and every moment of my life. And so my friends and my colleagues call me an activist. Some of them say to me that your conversations about apartheid make me feel a little uncomfortable. And I say to this, if you are feeling a little uncomfortable now, 
Imagine what it felt like in reality. Some of them say to me, get over apartheid, Zahira, it's over. And I say apartheid isn't over if so many South Africans are still living with these harsh realities. And then some of my friends and colleagues say to me, Zahira, with your work and what you do, why do you bother? Do something else more fun. <laughs> and I say, Madiba reminded us that the hard work is not done yet. And besides, imagine if Madiba had to say, why bother? <laughs> Where would that leave South Africa today? So I wonder, in countries like South Africa and Brazil, what does freedom mean to us? Both Brazil and South Africa have the worst Gini coefficients in the world. In socioeconomic terms, that means that our countries, our societies are the most divided. So divided, in fact, that they probably will never meet. In Brazil, and allow me to say, some of your buildings have two separate entrances, Serviço and Social. In fact, most of the buildings I went to in Sao Paulo have this. This is unacceptable. This is two separate entrances for people. This reminds me of my childhood in apartheid. Dangerously close. And the designers in this room change that. <laughs> Too many South Africans are living below the breadline. Too many South Africans are living without education. And too many South Africans are living without dignity. That is unacceptable. So with 30 years of democracy in Brazil and 20 years of democracy in South Africa, what does it actually mean for us? The challenges faced in our democracy should be seen as opportunities, not, and, pro excuse me, and processes of engagement, and not problems to be solved. People are not problems. Through my work, I discovered in South Africa the things that have equally warmed my heart and things that have made my hair stand on end. I have seen people live with such dire, in such dire conditions and circumstances that it made me so sad that even my own circumstances as a child paled in comparison. Yet these people, the thing that warmed my heart is that they had so much hope that there was going to be a better life, if not for them, for their children and grandchildren. They still hope that they have, they still have the hope that Madiba gave them all those years ago, that through our freedom and through our democracy, a better life will come to them. And so I realize that these moments when meeting these beautiful people that share their lives with me so generously, with yet, yet they have absolutely nothing, that I, re I remember and recall Madiba's words to me about the journey through freedom and emancipation only started then with our democracy. So freedom has to be negotiated constantly. And freedom has to be demonstrated always. But most of all, freedom needs to be shared. For those of us with political freedom, make certain that your government's policies have the interests of all people at heart. For those of us with economic freedom, make certain that all people have homes, that all people have access to quality services and have access to edu education and learning. For those of us with social freedom, make certain you free yourself from hatred, anger, and jealousy. Madiba reminds us that love comes more naturally to the human heart. Freedom isn't a com competition, and nor is it a, a race to the finishing line. Our freedom should be like a relay. We should pass it on to others. So I want all of us today, while celebrating South Africa's 20 years of democracy, that we should consider our lives, we should consider our work, be sure to engage with your freedom actively. Be that activist. <laughs> Apply your craft for the emancipation of others. Whether you are a doctor, whether you're an engineer, a designer, or an architect, especially if you are a political leader. Each day in our lives, when we have moments of uncertainty, or if we're looking for inspiration, we should think to ourselves, what would Madiba do? Thank you. <laughs>